Hello everyone, my name is Wendy Myers. Welcome to the Myers Detox Podcast. You can learn more about my work and detoxification at myersdetox.com. Today we have a fantastic show for you guys. We have Dr. Alariza Panapur on the show. He's my personal dentist and he's so brilliant. I love him so much. He has dramatically helped my health and he's uh, the things he does I have never heard of before. I mean, I've been to a lot of different dentists. I've been meticulous about my teeth throughout the years and taking care of them, being super proactive and thought I had a good dentist until I met Dr. Panapur and uh, I got recommended to him by a friend of mine. And uh, I wanted him to come on the show to talk about cavitations, these the dark side of infections left over from wisdom teeth extractions. And a lot of people are not aware that they have these infections that are basically causing a gangrenous bone that are is in their jaw, causing this chronic infection and leading to inflammatory conditions, which drags down your health, uh, causes fatigue, causes brain fog, causes hormonal issues, and can lead to very, very serious disease. So delving into this awesome subject today, and we'll be discussing things like um, all the different types of infections that can be found in these cavitations. I mean, you can get parasite eggs, there can be lime, uh, there can be food um, in these cavitations, but there's just a whole host of um, all different kinds of infections. And we'll also see the results from the infections in my cavitation. What's well, so, so fun. And uh, we'll be talking about um, also proper removal and treatment of cavitations and why Dr. Panapur does more redos of old cavitation surgery sites than new ones, the ones that have never been touched before. So just hint, hint, if you've had a cavitation surgery before, that doesn't mean you're in the clear, you might have to have it redone properly. And we'll also talk about jaw misalignment and how that can prevent proper hormone flow and brain detox and lymphatic drainage from, from your brain. Because when people are, you know, have these tight jaws and they're clenching and they're grinding their teeth at night, like I was, that really can over time when you're clenching cause a misalignment of your jaw, crack teeth and cause a lot of these issues I just mentioned. And we'll also talk about what you need to be aware of uh, with most biological dentists. So they're not all the same. So more about that on the show today. Such a good show for you guys. Thanks for tuning in. And I know you guys listening to this podcast are concerned about heavy metal detox and detoxification, the, the levels of toxins that you might have in your body. Well, I created a quiz. Just go to heavymetalsquiz.com, take the two second quiz, and you'll get your results after taking the quiz that will give your relative levels of toxins that you have in your body. But more importantly, you'll get a free video series that talk about the next steps to take. Where do you start with detoxification? What things you need to be doing, mistakes to avoid, metals testing, just all your questions answered about where to begin on your detox journey. Go take the quiz at heavymetalsquiz.com. Our guest today, Dr. Alariza Panapur, um, he is the most experienced holistic biological dentist in North America, practicing 100% holistic biological dentistry since 1993. He is brilliant. He has a wealth of information. And he is known as one of the world's most experienced DDSs for detection and removal of root canals with infection and for cavitation surgery at the site of tooth extractions. So Dr. Panapur is a frequent speaker at holistic dental conferences and at naturopathic medical schools. Dr. Panapur has documented patient case histories of healing through holistic dentistry uh, in his book, The Good Dentist. And he's also committed to excellence in natural biological dentistry that can be seen in his personal commitment to education. He has more than 150 advanced continuing education courses on his CV. He is active in educating the public about the effects of using mercury and dental amalgam since 19. 
1993. Dr. Panapora was part of a movement that succeeded in the state of California in having dental offices post signs that inform patients about mercury and dental amalgam and the effects of mercury on human health. Dr. Panapore's greatest desire is to educate the public about the need for holistic biological dentistry free of root canals, safe tooth extraction, and natural biomimetic materials when necessary as a path for every person's best health. You can learn more about Dr. Panapore and his work and make an appointment with him, which I highly recommend at systemicdentist.com. Dr. Pianapore, thank you so much for coming on the show. Thank you. Thank you so much for having me on your show. Yeah, so you are my personal dentist, and I'm just really happy that I found you. You were recommended to me by my friend Robert Marking, who mentioned that you had worked extensively with Dr. Dietrich Klinghart, who I co-hosted the Heavy Metal Summit with, Mm -hmm. and you do muscle testing. I mean, you, you do all this amazing cutting edge stuff that uh, very, very few dentists are, are doing, if at all. And so I wanted to have you come on the show. And why don't you tell people a, a little bit about yourself, how you got into biological dentistry, and like how you're taking dentistry to the next level? Um, thank you. Thank you. Um, Dr. Klinghardt, um, I've studied with him for some time. Um, and also other mentors. I've had. I've been really blessed to meet these amazing gurus, physicians, um, since I was a young adult. That allowed me to sit on their shoulders and see a little bit further than what they were actually seeing. So I've truly been blessed by divine and guiding um, through my life. Um, really early in dentistry, I knew that I wasn't going to be your average drill it, fill it, bill it type of dentistry. I really knew in my heart that there was so much more to dentistry than what I was being introduced to in dental school. Um, I remember when I went in down to the clinic, there was um, like 300 patients I had to take over. Um, And of course, I had to review every chart. And in every circumstance, every chart that I looked at, patient came in, got a new filling, came back, got a bigger filling, came back, got a bigger filling, then a crown, then a crown went to a root canal, then the root canal was extracted, became a bridge or a denture or a partial. And literally every patient, these 300 patients, was the same scenario. And I remember sitting there and I was so disappointed that all this effort, work, working at nights to pay for my tuition for dental school, you know, student loans, all of that, uh, is this the way my life is going to be? But I knew in my heart there was more to dentistry. So I really took it upon myself to take as many courses as it presented to me. You know, the more I learned, the more I saw. And the more I saw, I realized that brushing, flossing is not, it, it, that's just not, not it. There's, more, there's so much more to it than that. Um, dentistry is truly a physical, energetic, mental, intuitive part of my system. And through my lectures, I have a lecture referred to as dental epigenetics, where I'm able to connect these branches to dentistry. Um, so that's really where, where my path started. Um, yeah, it, it's, it's been a very long, interesting path, and I wouldn't trade it for anything. Above and beyond all the craziness out there with Quack Watch and yeah. you know, uh, governmental <laughs> agencies trying to shut me down and what yeah. have you. <laughs> no, um, it's an honor to be on Quack Watch. I, 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 I've actually sent a letter to Dr. Barrett saying thank yeah. you for making me so famous. Yeah. You know, because so. yeah, I've been to a lot of dentists. I have a dentist in the family. I mean, I've been to a lot of a different dentists, and the things you talk about are just not talked about by even top level biological dentists. I mean, you just take things to a whole other level, and so that's why I wanted to talk today about cavitations, sure, and how these are just the stealth health stealer 
that drain people or, uh, you know, a source of hidden chronic infections. Can you just lay out and explain what a cavitation is for anyone who doesn't know? Absolutely. Before I, I do get started, I just want to share that as much as I respect these different academy of biological based dentistry, um, you know, I've been attending a lot of these courses for the past five, six, ten years. And the last few lectures that I've given to them, I've been pretty disappointed. And my disappointment really goes to the lack of continuing education. So when I have a patient that calls me from, I don't know, uh, Louisville, Kentucky, and says, who should I go to? I, I can't come to you. Who should I go to? I always say, ask for their CV. Make sure that if they're doing a filling for you, if they're doing surgery for you within the past two years, they have taken the appropriate courses in updating themselves on that. Yeah. So that's my recommendation to everyone. As far as cavitations, I want to let you know that cavitation is not a scientific word. It's a work that's been given to this protocols, hence the word cavity Curatage of the cavity, cavitation, um, but it's not the scientific word for it. Um, I have pretty much came up with maybe over 20 different ways why such a thing as cavitation could occur. But before then, let me share with you guys. Let me kind of take a step back. 1990, when I started dental school, first class uh, oral pathology, microbiology, they taught us that there's over 300 different kind of bacteria in the mouth. I remember leaving that lecture and thinking to myself, then gosh, my Cocker Spaniels, Ziggy and Marley have a, I do. <laughs> and I would take swabs and I would look at my microflora and my dogs. And mine was like, wow, yeah. 20 years later, <laughs> the research is telling us that there's actually over 2000 different types of bacteria, fungus, virus, parasite that live in these colonies, we're just going to call them biofilm. So biofilm is what causes tooth decay. Biofilm is what causes gum disease. Biofilm is the plaque and the calculus that we build up. Biofilm is what we find in these so-called cavitation sites. Yes. Now, yes, yes. what does gum disease, tooth decay, infected root canals that can also harbor biofilm, cavitation sites, TMJ issues, clenching, grinding, as it leads to sleep apnea and lymphatic movements, and et cetera, et cetera. What do all of these have in common? They're all chronic inflammation on your immune system. So now if you're an individual dealing with any kind of autoimmune issue, the last thing you want is for your body to be constantly dealing with these chronic issues. First year of dentistry, they taught us if you have gum disease, I'm sorry, if you're a diabetic, you have gum disease. They go hand in hand. Every patient that comes to you says diabetic, your number one protocol is make sure their gums are healthy. Well, again, 20 years later, we're not sure if diabetes is causing gum disease or gum disease causing, di causing diabetes. So we know that chronic inflammation is the common denominator to almost 70, 80% of our autoimmune issues out there. Mm -hmm. So what these cavitations, above and beyond, and we'll get into it, the microbiology of it, at the end of the day, there are a chronic inflammation on your immune system. Now, let's say you're dealing with any kind of a, God forbid, healing crisis, cancer. Uh, I mean, you name it. The last thing you want is to have an infected site in your jaw to holding you back from any getting better. Even with chelation, I know that you have, you have spent years uh, training people, advising people on chelation. How can you chelate properly? When you have multiple infections, anywhere from tooth decay, gum disease, and what have you, going on in your system. People tell me, when I start chelation, I actually 
get worse. Well, because there are other issues that you're not attending to. And one of these is chronic issues such as gum disease, infected root canals, and these cavitation sites. Yeah, and so what's causing these cavitation sites? Like where, where are they in our mouth and what causes them? Um, I would say 90% of the time, there are in areas where there was previous extraction done, where 16, 17, 18, 20 young adults, you had your wisdom teeth removed. Like me. Or, yeah, or in fact, the root canal that was removed. Mm-hmm. So most of the time we're seeing it in these areas and we can get into why. Most recently, we're seeing these sites in areas that are surrounded by healthy teeth where they shouldn't be. So I get called from a lot of naturopaths, a lot of other dentists, hey, how is this possible? This patient has a cavitation site where she never had a tooth extraction done or any kind of trauma to that site. We're still working on trying to figure this out. One of my thoughts is that, let's say if there's an area of the jaw that, and we know that teeth through the nervous system, arterial system, lymphatic system, neural system, have connection to different parts of the body. So let's say if your kidney or your liver is being truly burdened, and that throws off the energetic part of that, and that could correlate to that certain site in the jaw that is short-circuiting and allowing this collins of biofilm go and harbor there. See, if you really study biofilm, biofilm is an anaerobic type colony. They hate oxygen. They like to thrive in areas that there is no oxygen. So if there's an area that has a lack of oxygen due to chemical uh, toxicity, due to any other factor, that's the side they would want to go and hide that. Yeah. Um, so this is what we're seeing. Now, why they're happening? My gosh, um, there was a research done in Germany or Switzerland, I'm not sure, just recently. They took these young adults, college students, and they paid them to remove their bicuspids on each side. And then later they would put implant for them. And they monitored these patients above and beyond anything you can think of. So the right side, they took the bus by cuspid out, and that's all they did. And they monitored the body, and the body said, hmm, trauma. Let me just send some white blood cells there. Let's just go repair it. No big deal. The left side, when they took the tooth out, they corotaged the ligament, the fiber, all of the surrounding tissue. Even they went as extended 0.5 millimeter of bone was even corotaged. The body responded as amputation. Let me send the whole calorie there. So if you as a young adult went through surgery of your, let's say, wisdom tooth or root canal, and the tooth was not completely removed, above and beyond the ligament, fibers, you name it, that is a potential site for cavitation. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Number two, hormones. We see more cavitations in our female patients than our male patients. Why? Well, we know that hormones are a huge part of healing and blood clotting factors. So if you're an 18, 19, 20-year-old young lady, I mean, I don't know any women between the ages of 17 to 35 that's going through some sort of a hormonal craziness. So if you're a young adult, let's say in college, you're studying hard, you're partying a little bit, you got to get your wisdom teeth out, they go in there, pop four of them at the same time, thank you so much, see you later. Your body is not, has the doesn't capability of healing if your hormones or other um, blood factors are off, there you go. That's another reason for possible cavitation. And at the end of the day, of course, it goes to surgical expertise. You know, in dental school, really, they taught us pop the tooth out, put some gauze, and have a nice day. They really didn't teach us go in there, remove, corretage, 
make sure the patient has uh, uh, the hemocrat numbers are proper for proper healing. It's just not done. And then ozone too, right? Well, ozone is just one factor. Ozone yeah. is, new to the, is new. But see, between the, the main thing here that we need to pay attention to above and beyond, let's say if a tooth is not infected, and that's what the research goes back into, the one I was just shared with you guys, with the students with different bicuspids, that ligament between the root of the tooth and the bone, there is what they call a periodontal ligament. 70% of the blood supply that comes to that tooth comes from the ligament, not the actual artery and the vein that go into that tooth. So if you take a tooth out and you don't remove and cortage that ligament and fibers thoroughly, you leave it behind, it's like you're leaving dead tissue behind. Mm -hmm. I had one interesting case about a couple of years ago, a patient came in, and of course, every time we do our surgeries, whatever we remove, we send to the pathologist. We want to see what it is. We want to confirm that it was dead bone. And most of the time, they call it chronic fibrosing osteomyelitis, which, in a way, just another schmamsy mamsy word for gangrene bone. Yeah. Now, this patient came in, we cleaned everything out, I sent it to the pathologist, and I got the report back. It said chronic fibrosing osteomyelitis and remnants of carrot and celery. <laughs> I, I kind of, and I, you know, I called the pathologist. I said, excuse me, is there a new biofilm or biofilm colony called that you're calling carrots and celery? They're like, no, no, no. We actually found this is 25 years later. They were able to tell remnants of carrot and celery. So basically, patient had the surgery done, wisdom teeth was removed. Either she wasn't given the proper protocol to keep the area clean, or she didn't take care of the area. She had soup, what have you, and carrot and celery got into that. <laughs> I'm sure there are some celery in my cavitation, too. Some, <laughs> cel hope. some celery juice. <laughs> yeah. So, you know, a lot of people come to me, they say, well, I have these cavitation sites. Um, and uh, can you can we treat them with ozone? Not if pieces of tooth structure have been left behind, not if pieces of ligament have been left behind. Ozone is not going to do anything for you. And also it depends on how big these sites, these voids, these vo they're really voids within your jawbone. And we see that not right now through our 3D scans. We can actually see voids where there's no blood flow. And of course, there's no blood flow. There's no oxygen, no oxygen, biofilm colonies live there. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, and so so we have these cavitations that can be left over in your wisdom tooth. We had wisdom teeth extracted. And I uh, I was told by a friend, if, you know, I was, like, I was tired, not feeling well, and just feeling like I should be feeling better given all my, my health lifestyle and diet and the links that I go to to be healthy. And they said, go check out your cavitation. So I, I came to you and uh, did a scan. You and Tell us about the scan you have to do to discover cavitation. So it's a, a 3D scan. Where do you get this done? Because you can't I, do it at, at dent, most dentist's office. Well, actually, I do have I, – I had it in my Washington office. And now that I've relocated it to – my California office, I'm bringing it down with me. Great. It's great. About a, almost $150,000 equipment. Yeah. So I had a choice of buying an airplane or buying this. <laughs> I, I, I got that. And honestly, I feel that every dentist needs to have this in their office. So basically, these 3D scan. So the, the, the old dental x-rays will show us areas in the jawbone in a two-dimensional two image. So a lot of these infections could hide because of the overlapping when the images are done. Now, the 3D scan, it's amazing. We're able to see the bone structure, your airway, your cranium, your spine, C1 through C7, in a three-dimensional dimension. So through this, we're able to truly see the size where they're at, where they're hiding, the extent of it in a three-dimensional picture. So now, of course, there's a lot of companies that are like private radiology companies. So I don't just consider myself as the expert. I also, after reviewing this, I always send 
these 3D scans through the radiologist and have them look and see, hey, these are the areas that I'm concerned with. What do you see? And of course, then they sell the letter of uh, interpretation, like what we did for you, that says, you know, it's highly uh, suspicious that these areas, there's something going on, there's some sort of a bony deformity going on, and we suspect is some sort of infection, such as chronic fibrosing osteomyelitis. Of course, we know at the end, when the surgery is done, these infections is removed. And let me kind of stop there too. I personally do more redos of cavitation than actual cavitation from other dentists, from other patients that have gone through different dentists. So I have a two-week protocol before and after surgery to get my patients prepped and ready. And we can get into that a little bit more. Um, just because of, especially the last few years, in the older days, we would do just a pathology. We would remove the infection, send it to the pathologist, and they would tell us what it was, like the big names. Now we have culturing technique. So we're able to know exactly the name of every bacteria, virus, fungus, parasite that we find in these lesions. Now, why is that very important? Well, if we have a patient that's living with some liver issue, some kidney issue, some virus, something that keeps attacking the liver and kidney, and we don't know where that's coming from, 99% of the time it's hiding within the jaw, within those cavitation sites. Mm -hmm. So now when we do the culturing, we know, oh, this is the bacteria. It's the Epstein virus that's attacking her liver or kidney. Now our doctors can go after that particular bacteria or virus more directly. Yeah. So I, you know, I do a lot of heart cases, a lot of patients that are dealing with these heating crises. And I can't tell you the amount of time that I spent with their naturopath, with their functional medical doctor, really taking them from A to Z. Why are we doing this? How did we find these areas? What can we do to prep our patients? Because you know, during surgery, what we're really doing is we're spreading that infection within the system. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So how do we combat that? How do we help our patients? Well, I can either put you on five to seven different types of antibiotics. That's what the science experts say. Or, or we can do what's called immune modulation. Depending on your system, a few weeks before the surgery, you start getting these high vitamin D, calcium, intravenous IV supports to really boost up your immune system. And at the same time, when we remove these infections, well, I got to put something back in there. Correct? Well, what are my choices? Cow bone, cadaver bone, monkey bone, or your own? So now we do, we take your blood, we centrifuge it, we grab the stem cells. I have videos on uh, Instagram and Facebook where I make what's called sticky bone, and then it's of your own, and that goes back in there. So if you've been dealing with infections quite a bit, with these infections for many years, that means your blood is pretty polluted. So another reason for this immune modulation is not only get your immune system ready, but at the same time, get your blood as clean as possible so I can abstract the good stuff out of it. You yeah. know, I do a lot of facial aesthetics. I have another company called the Casanova Facelift where we use microneedling, PRF, PRP, all that for facial augmentation. And I can tell you three out of 10 women that come to me for simple microneedling, um, what they used to like, have you heard of the vampire facelift? Oh, yes. Yeah, so my company <laughs> is the Casanova facelift. So I do the microneedling, I take the blood, and I see the blood is thick, dark, and I'm like, okay, your body's definitely dealing with some sort of infection. I can't get what I need out of this blood. And I tell you, 80% of the time when we go back in there, when I advise them to go get a 3D cone beam scan, and let's look if there's any hidden infection, we fight infected root canals and cavitation sites. And I just tell them, you know, you should gotta go do a little research on these and figure it out yourself. I'm not trying to sell them anything, or, but I can tell how dirty the blood is because they're constantly dealing with these infections. Yeah, and it's so important, that's why I'm having on this podcast, to have some awareness about cavitations and if it's 
potentially contributing to your fatigue and health issues. And just uh, if you're just doing a lot of different things and nothing seems to be working, this is just a basic foundation, foundational thing that a lot of people need to address. And I was really surprised. I mean, I, you know, I, I, I knew that I needed to get around to doing the cone beam and addressing the cavitations, but I was just surprised that at how much better I feel. I had one side done. I still have to have the other side done because you just do one side at a time. You're not doing all four like they do it at some some places. Some doctors. Yeah, and so when I got my my results back of the infections that were in my cavitation, and I'm going to show them to you guys right here, just so you guys can can check this out. Um, I was really shocked. So here's my here's my results of my cavitation here, and look at these reds. Look at all these infections that I had no idea that I had in my jaw. That's dragging me down, dragging down my immune system. We're not going to get into it or pick it apart right here, but there's just a lot. I have a lot of cooties. And so right. I just wanted to share that all with you guys. Well, um, uh, that uh, even just the to, healthiest pe the healthiest person has all this stuff going on. Well, well correct. Um, you, you know, I would say in this panel, you have the gram positives that are opportunistics. These guys are just sitting there waiting for the opportunity. As soon as something attacks your immune system, they follow through. Then you have the nasty gram negatives that are actually causing damage. Then you have the spirochetes and the parasites. So when you start looking at this, it's like, whoa, it, it gets a little scary. That's why we go above and beyond to make sure our patients are prepped and ready for these procedures. I can't tell you how many patients come in and say, yeah, I had cavitation sites four at the same time and everything failed. Well, did the dentist put you on any free supplements? Did he talk to your doctor? Was there a 3D scan? Nothing. And this is some sort of a biological dentist. And I reach out to them. I'm like, listen, I have this patient of yours. Before I even get started, when was the last time you took any surgical courses? Well, they get a little offended, but the chair and say, since dental school. And I just say, thank you so much. It was a pleasure speaking with you. Yeah, I mean, our dentist is not from, required. From say. Our I, dentist is not required to do They're things. required to take 60 units of continuing education every two years. Okay. But unfortunately, you know, when you just take a weekend course at some biological dental conference, that's not enough. Mm -hmm. You know, every two years, I spend two weeks in Florida is just focus on at most advanced ways in surgical techniques or my bonding, doing fillings, what have you. So that's what I'm saying. Continuing education, it's so important because things are shifting so fast for us. That, that's, that's where we're at. Um, you mentioned about being drained, being tired. You know, I have patients that come in and ask me, if I do the surgery, is this going to get better? Is that going to get better? I don't know. Well, what I can tell you is we're getting rid of a chronic issue that's impinging upon your system. And if you go look at my reviews, I have a number of patients that come to me. Yeah, by the way, I never told you I had this backache that went away right away. I had this issue with my shoulder that went away right away. I mean, of course, I can advertise these things because now – the dental boards thing, I'm acting like a doctor, but this is the feedback that, are, that they're telling me. At the end of the day, you're getting rid of a chronic issue that is holding you back from getting to where you need to get. If it's chelation, dealing with Lyme, anti-aging, healthier life, you name it. Remember, I think I read this in Scientific America a few years ago. They had a very, no, more than about five years ago, that a really interesting article on autoimmune issues. The research says, as me and you are sitting here and talking together right now, our immune system is dealing with over 6,000 different types of cancer cells. That's me and you right now. That is happening through God, environment, physical, and you know, everything, Wi-Fi, all, all of that. You know, we're being bombarded. 
So the last thing you want is to have a have gum disease or infection within your jawbone holding you back and putting a burden on your immune system, especially our female patients between the ages of 38, 46, which go through menopause and breast cancer has been directly linked to gum disease. And cavitation is just another form of gum disease. Yeah. But instead of being in the gum disease is the gums and the bone. Cavitation is just the bone basically. Yeah. Yeah. And it's, it's one of those things where if your immune system is overwhelmed or it's overburdened and you have all these cancer cells in your body, but it's just busy doing other things and you're fatigued and exhausted, you know, that's why cancer can take hold or a tumor can take hold and grow out of control. Was it the immune system is just too overburdened. We have to take every burden off of our immune system as possible. And, and I mean, have you ever like seen a patient that doesn't have cavitations? I mean, this is really, really common. Well, let's use as an example. You had four wisdom teeth taken out. Thank God, only the upper two are infected. The lowers are not. Mm -hmm. So that's wonderful. So yes, I do see patients that, thank God, the body either was a surgeon, thank God, who did a good job, or something went along that these areas did not become infected. Most of the time, is all four wisdom teeth areas. But yes, I would say one out of every 20, no, no, one out of every 50, or even maybe 100. I'm not sure. Um, one, you being such, you only had them in upper jaw, not the lower jaw. Yeah. So that's wonderful. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And so, so tell us a little bit more about your, your protocol, like leading up to doing a cavitation surgery. So um, you want people to do like IV vitamin C, maybe it, it, some really, it, it, it really depends on the individual patient and their core. I mean, you, you know, you're very active in your health, you know, because you teach, you preach what you do. So that was a different story. But again, Every patient is a little different, but at the end of the day, it's a combination of supplementation. And most people take a bunch of supplements anyway, so they either reduce or add something else to their protocol and intravenous IV supports to get your immune system strong, get your blood nice and oxidized, so we don't have to give you antibiotics. Yeah. You know, mm -hmm. if anything, one dose or maybe half a dose, you know, but remember that list that you showed me with that microbiology, when I showed that list to a number of advanced microbiologists, pathologists, infection control doctors in America, the conclusion was you got to put your patient on five to seven different types of antibiotics. Can you imagine what that's going to do to your gut? Yeah. And you kill your mitochondria too. Above and beyond. I can't tell you how many patients I see that were diagnosed early with Lyme disease and they went on these regiments of two years of antibiotics. Well, gut, the gut is destroyed. They're not able to absorb the nutrients and what they need. The body is acidic. So, of course, when the body looks for the next source of minerals, what does it go after? Your bone and your teeth. So I would say dental health, as far as gums, cranial harmony, infections of the jaw, is your number one step before you start any other protocol that you, you're trying to do. If it's chelation, um, MS, I mean, I mean, you name it. Yeah, I was you know, upset. It took me so long to finally address my cavitations. I and I, I knew there was something going on in my body that I just, uh, but I, I wasn't sure what was going on. But I and I started seeking out different counsel from different health experts. And I'm just, uh, I was just kind of bummed. I waited so long to have this diagnosed and then deal with it. So yeah. I'm really, really happy that I found you. And I and I felt, and I was really happy that you know, that you didn't give me antibiotics, that there was a protocol where I could do IV vitamin C because most dentists, they're like, oh, just give you antibiotics, which 
you know, I don't want to take, I'll take them if necessary or, if Correct. They, you know, but the IV vitamin C was such a game changer. I felt so much better after I started uh, doing that. And I, no, I had this surgery, dental surgery, no antibiotics. It's just brilliant. Absolutely, absolutely. I mean, me, myself, I travel quite a bit. My life is kind of spread all over the States, teaching, taking courses. I try to get at least one vitamin C, what they call Myers, at least once a week or every two weeks, just to support my own system, you know, travel, what have you. Um, so I recommend it to anyone, you know. Um, yeah. Um, any, any other thing that I can think of, um, I, I do, of course, get a lot of patients that come in that share with me, you know, I've spent over $100,000 on my health. And now they're telling me that these, my dental issues has been keeping me from truly getting better. You know, so we see that with a lot of our patients as well. And I feel for them. They spend so much money, travel the world, did every type of protocol, but they've had either cavitations or multiple infections in their jaw. Yeah, and this is the thing. There's a lot of people going, getting, you know, uh, in that the, the conventional medical doctor doing that revolving door. I and mean, when they're sick of doing that, they go to functional medicine and then they do all these different protocols and supplements because it's the next best thing. But uh, uh, most of these practitioners are not recommending their patients go to get dental work or addressing cavitations because most dentists don't know about it, much less medical doctors. Correct, correct. I spend a lot of time teaching medical doctors, chiropractors, naturopaths on the importance of dental health. I mean, how can you get your patient sugar level, hormones level, thyroid, adrenals, when they're dealing with a simple thing such as gum disease? Mm -hmm. You know, when your body's acidic, when the pH is off, when, the, when your digestion is off, well, you produce more bacteria, more biofilm. You know, you need to, instead of going every six months for your cleanings, you got to go every three months for your cleanings. Use toothpaste that are able to alkaline your saliva and calm and kind of calm that acidity down. So, you know, patients just don't know. And the doctors don't know because they don't teach them in dental school. There is no dental education in these medical programs or naturopathic programs. Maybe they touch upon it a little bit as far as a scientific me method. This is a tooth. This is enamel. This is dentine. Sits in a jawbone. Thank you. Have a nice day. But the, but the for example, all the group, every student that I knew that I started with, Dr. Klinghardt, most of them are naturopaths. They actually have a dental questionnaire on their, uh, on their patient intake form because they've been taught what an important aspect it is. Yeah, yeah. Can you talk about the aspect of Lyme mm. and how that can dramatically impact people's health? Because, I mean, it's not only Lyme. There's Lyme-like infections. There's so many people that are dealing with Lyme and Lyme-like infections because there's something going on in the environment. It's much more prevalent. People are much more toxic. Uh, people are succumbing and suffering from the, these types of infections. Can you talk about that and how it relates to dentistry? Absolutely. Well, Lyme is basically chlamydia that has advanced itself. And, you know, when I think about chlamydia, I think about syphilis, and from syphilis, I think about civilization, civilization. So as we are progressing in humanity, there will be more of this type of viruses and bacteria that have advanced themselves, that become so resistant to antibiotics. You know, why do we have to give five to seven different types of antibiotics for these cavitation sites? Because as soon as you give one dose, they change their shape. They become pre-immune to the antibodies. So you've got to attack them with another one and another one and another one. So why are these bacteria, why are these viruses are getting so strong? Well, some research says as, as we're evolving, as we are dealing with all these toxicities in the world, so are these bacteria and parasites and fungus and what have you. They've learned how to protect themselves. Mm -hmm. Now, Lyme, 
it's an interesting little bugger. It doesn't live in your bloodstream. It hides in joints. So we've had patients that have gone through Lyme panel, you know, had a test done, no Lyme. We put them on a treadmill for 10, 15 minutes. We test them again, then we see Lyme. Hmm. Another reason is why Lyme patients is very hard for them to exercise. But as soon yeah. as they start exercising, the Lyme. Now, remember when we talked about biofilm? Yes. 2,000 different types of virus, fungus, bacteria, all living together. Well, Lyme has found refuge within biofilm. If you go on YouTube and just put search biofilm Lyme, there's a video that comes up that actually shows how this Lyme is hiding within biofilm. And when you look at that video, it looks like something out of Star Wars movies. Hmm. You know? So again, so far we know that we cannot get rid of Lyme. You got to create a coexistent with Lyme. So a couple of very number one issues, if you're dealing with Lyme, you cannot, you have to have a perfect dental health. Your teeth, gums, no root canals, no infections, good craniosacral balance for oxygenation and lymphatic movements. That's very, very important. Because again, Lyme hides within biofilm. Of course, you know, whenever you go through any kind of chelation, detoxification, you really are creating an acidic environment. And with that acidic environment, of course, pH goes up and your normal flora, this normal biofilm is able to, able to like work like super speed. So that's also where you got to pay attention to. Mm -hmm. You know? Interesting. Um, I would say 90% of the Lyme patients that I see have no cranial movement because their cranial sacrally, the, the cranium is completely off. The bite is completely off. And that's affecting their oxygenation and lymphatic movement. Mm -hmm. And they want to go through all these protocols. I'm like, great. But if you don't have any lymphatic movement, and if you have no oxygenation to your system, uh, you're just kind of wasting your money. You're wasting your time. Yeah. 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 It was really interesting when I, I had come to you initially because I had this uh, searing tooth pain and uh, trying to figure out what was wrong, what was causing it. I was sure I just had to have the tooth pulled or I needed a, there's a root canal infection. I was sure there was an infection and I was just grinding my teeth. I was Correct. just stressed, grinding, and you gave me a, a bite that I sleep with at night. It's kind of a, it's not a, it's not really a night guard. It's much more advanced than that. Correct. And, and it was amazing how much better I slept, um, how much like less stressed my jaws are because they're kind of the purpose is to realign my jaw. And when I first started wearing it, you know, all of your your hormones start flowing again. You said you're going to be a little bit emotional. I was like, okay, great doc. And then that day I was totally crying and like <laughs> emotional just as my jaw had been opened yeah. up and it was well, flowing again. It was amazing. You, you know, you know, the TMJ joint has more hormonal receptors than any other part of the body. Hmm. Remind me to tell you a little story later, but going back to, um, so basically how can I, I just can't find myself to go there, do a surgery for someone who's clenching and grinding, who's got muscle spasm, lack of lymphatic movement, all the submandibular glands are swollen up. So what am I doing? I'm not really helping that patient. Some patients feel like, oh, you're just trying to charge me extra, da, 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 da. I'm like, no. If you feel this bite issue, this bite is not a problem for you, Great, I will still do the surgery, but he's a 10-page consent form that says that <laughs> any problems, any reinfections, any swelling, any pain, I told you so. Yeah. <laughs> you know, um, going back to what I wanted to share with you, multiple patients I get every year, mother brings their 12, 14, 13, 16-year-old young daughters to me. My daughter was an honor student, chess club, debate club. As soon as her bicuspids were extracted, 
graces were placed. They start shifting the round. She's come rebellious. I don't, she wants to kill us. I don't know her anymore. So forth and so on. Yeah. First, I thought no. maybe is the toxicity from the braces, from the nickel, you know? And some patients are uh, allergic to that. But really, it went back to as they were shifting these teeth around, they were disturbing the cranial harmony, the cranial movement, especially the TMJ and the hormones. As soon as we would remove the braces, allow through my appliance for things to come in alignment, they were back to where they, who they were before. Hmm. So it's really interesting. I've had patients that thought, they thought they went through menopause. But they hadn't really early in their life, but they hadn't. They just had lack of lymphatic oxygenation. And as soon as I placed the appliance, within weeks, I would get a call. Hey, Dr. Panner, guess what? What? Uh, this is like 12 midnight. I just got my period. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Again, I'm not, an, I'm not a medical doctor. I'm not an OBGYN, anything like that. I'm just sharing my experience with my patients. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know? yeah. I, I want to make I that very it, clear. Yeah, I thought it was really profound when I just started wearing this appliance. I mean, I just felt like my, my jaw kind of opened up, relaxed, and then like I was getting these chronic headaches, and those went away, and um, just uh, you sleep better because you're just like this stress, the this, this stressor that you have oh. is just, you know, just well, coming this, down. This, this clenching and grinding is a skeletal, muscular, neural issue so you really have to go about it understanding all those three concepts and i've pretty much taken every tmj course that's been available to me in the united states and abroad and i just i would go to these classes and i would say well you know the chiropractic medicine says this osteopathic medicine says this what are your thoughts oh we don't really care we just stand this and this is your teeth and do what we tell you and shut the hell up. Yeah. I've even had me, I've even asked <laughs> one course. They even actually asked me to leave. I was asking too many questions. <laughs> I was, well, we're not going to ask you to yeah, leave. I was, you disturb, I was disturbing the flow of the class. Yeah. <laughs> so um, again, it goes back to the more I learned, the more I saw. And of course, the more I saw, the harder and harder patients started coming to me. Mm -hmm. And I've learned more from my patients than any course I've taken out there. Truly, I think our health is not just on the physical body. It's physical, energy, mental, intuitive, spiritual. I can give you a number of patients that were dealing with just adrenal fatigue, what have you. As soon as they got a divorce, they got better. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. As soon as they moved house, they got better. They moved out of state, they got better because they were living in a toxic type environment. And we know stress and toxicity actually shrinks your DNA. And we can sit here and talk about this for a weekend. So health is more than just, and teeth are truly one part of that paradigm when it comes to your physical, energy, and mental. Um, levels of your of your body of your existence yeah and that's what i try to look at with my patients if you come to me and you've been to 25 dentists before you get to me i got to be very cautious what happened with every one of those dentists are you chasing your sickness and unfortunately we see that three out of ten patients we see them they're chasing their sickness so what i can do for them is quite limited there's some sort of a blockage on some other level with this patient. Either it's fear, anger, what have you. There's not allowing you to get better. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, and it's, it's one of those things where, uh, again, we're going back to addressing the underlying root cause. And the, the dentistry, the dental issues are a huge part of that. It's not just getting your teeth clean and getting rid of gum infections. I mean, the... The cavitations, removing infected root canals is a huge, huge part of that. And also, Dr. Panaport, thank you so much for coming My on pleasure. The show My pleasure. and sharing your wisdom. Is there any other message or anything that we've left out that you want to share with the listeners? Um, I would say make sure that whoever you go to, 
is up to date with the latest technology. That's number one. And that's and number two, I'll, I'll give you an example. If I have a patient that comes to me that has, let's say, gum disease. Yeah, I go to my dentist every three months and I have to pay all this money to get this cleanings done because I build up plaque and bacteria. Or patient comes to me, you know, I have this tooth decay. Well, of course, I have to use non-invasive methods to remove that decay. Instead of drilling, we can use laser, aeration, you know, et cetera, et cetera. I have to put a clean, non-toxic material in there. I don't use any amalgams in my practice. More biocompatible. Now, of course, there's not, nothing in this world that is 100% biocompatible with you, but something more cleaner. But my question will be, how did you get this tooth decay? What's going on in your body that's causing you to get this decay? Is it lack of brushing and flossing, which usually is not? Well, let me teach you how to brush and floss properly. But if not, doc, I swear, I brush three times a day. I floss. Look at my kid. I have this, you know, disposable, da, 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 da. Then there's definitely something else going on in your body. Let's figure out with the help of other practitioners, your MD, your naturopath, why this is. Because if I'm able to stop that patient from coming every six months to my practice with a new cavity, that's truly where I've done my job. So you can call me biological, alternative, systemic, quack. You can call me all of the above. <laughs> but at the end of the day, I like to think of myself as a conscious dentist, a yeah. good dentist. Yeah. Yeah. A systemic thing about the whole body, uh, not just not Whole just body the dentistry. Yes. yes, exactly. I love it. And so, so if someone doesn't want to go to a regular old biological dentist and they want to work with you, where can we find you? How do we get in contact with you? Best way is my website, www.systemicdentist.com. Fantastic. And Fantastic. for all dentists out there, please continue education. Past two years, I've spent more time going into dentist offices and changing the paradigm of their practice. And these were all so-called alternative holistic biological dentistry. Fantastic. And you have a book also, correct? Yes, The Good Dentist. Yeah, just right. Google it, gooddentist.is. <laughs> yeah, and you, you're such a wealth of information. I could talk to you for hours, but if anyone wants any more info, you have tons of videos on, on YouTube and YouTube, on the internet, other the website, interviews. Correct. You guys want to get, get any more. So Dr. Karpanapur, thanks for so much for coming Thank on the show. You. Thank and you. everyone, thank you so much for listening to the Myers Detox podcast, where we explore all types of topics related to detoxification, but also helping to get rid of your dental infections on the show today. So thanks for tuning in. I'll talk to you guys next week.